If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, the German newspaper Bild Zeitung declared war on Islam. The German newspaper Bild Zeitung is known for their trashy journalism, for sensationalizing situations and polarizing sites within Germany. Therefore, it is not too surprising to see that the Bild Zeitung would polarize yet again, this time the ethnic Germans against the Muslim population within Germany. But this time they totally went overboard and they created a manifesto, not only in German, but in five different languages. Aside from German, you can read it in Arabic, in Russian, in Turkish, and of course in English. So the Bild Zeitung really went out of their way to address every Muslim living in Germany. We have a very high population of Turkish Muslims, Russian Muslims, of course, Arabic Muslims. And therefore the Bild Zeitung decided to print it in every single language so everybody will get the memo. Of course, we won't see any objective journalism from the Bild Zeitung, quite the opposite. We will see a bunch of hate speech. However, it is A-OK -okay as long as a mainstream outlet does it. No problem. They're going to call the Muslim population within Germany Islamists, terrorists, anti-Semites and what not. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, do me the favor, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. All right, for your viewing pleasure, of course, we're going to choose the English article, the Bild Manifesto. Germany, we have a problem. So in this quote-unquote manifesto, they created 50 points addressing the Muslim population in Germany. So here we read, our world is in chaos and we are right in the middle of it. Since the terrorist attack by Hamas on Israel, we are experiencing a new dimension of hatred in our country against our values, democracy and against Germany. So those are of course powerful semantics here. They are alleging that the Muslim population within Germany is standing against their values by protesting against the occupation in Palestine. By saying that the occupation is illegitimate under international law, those people get labeled as terrorists and as anti-Semites. Of course, they're not mentioning the nature of the state of Israel. It is an apartheid, ethnocentric state after all. But nobody will be talking about that. Quite the opposite. It is much easier to claim that all of those people are simply terrorists and they are standing against the German democratic values. We proceed. The recent days reveal what has been simmering and boiling in our society for a long time. In our country, there are many people who oppose our way of life. People who celebrate the murder of innocent civilians. Those who teach their children to hate others because they are infidels. Those who want to forbid women from wearing skirts and trousers. Those who despise the basic law and instead listen to radical preachers. They exploit tolerance because they want a different society. So first and foremost, yes, it is correct. There are people within Germany that oppose your way of life. There are people within Germany that are opposed to girls wearing mini skirts to school. That is absolutely correct. But guess what? This is not exclusive to Muslims. Quite the opposite. Traditionalist German conservatives would agree with those statements. The same applies, of course, to traditional Christians within Germany as well. Yes, Bild Zeitung. Yes, Bundesrepublik Deutschland. There are plenty of people within Germany that oppose those liberal values. This is not exclusive to Muslims. Muslims. And moreover, you speak here of innocent civilians that have been killed and people are celebrating this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Of course, within Islam, we oppose the killing of innocent civilians. However, if you look into the situation of Israel, you will find that every so-called civilian, women and men alike, have served within the military. And moreover, yet again, the nature of the state of Israel. If we look into the creation of the state of Israel, we will find that it was created 1948. 
Prior to this, the country was called Palestine, and the Jewish population was roughly around 7%. This is when the Brits decided to mass export European Jews into the land of Palestine, settle there, and kick out the indigenous population. You do have a problem with this when we're talking about Australia, when we're talking about Canada, when we're talking about America, but when it comes down to the Palestinian people, you don't blink an eye. Of course, it continues with more radical terms. We must not accept this. This can not continue. Germany must now say no to anti-Semitism, to misanthropy, and to all those who say no to us. So this is absolutely golden, of course. Anti-Semitism. All you have to do is Google for one second what is a Semite, and you will see a Semite is a member of any of the peoples who speak or spoke a Semitic language, including in particular the Jews and the Arabs. Jews and Arabs, you say, Google? That's very interesting. I don't want to allege anything here, but it seems like somebody tried to create a narrative. The point of the story is both groups are Semitic people, the Jews and the Arabs. If you're pro-Palestinian, you're not anti-Semitic. However, if you're in support of the apartheid state of Israel and the genocide on the Palestinian people, yes, you could be labeled an anti-Semite. Then they continue with more Israeli slogans, never again is now. This is something that has been repeated by Ben Shapiro, for example. It's quite funny because they are claiming to have the German people's best interest in heart. However, they are repeating exclusive Israeli slogans over here. Then they are showing the Brandenburger Tor with Jewish flags and they say, this is our Germany. I would agree here, nothing truly changed. This is your Germany. Back in the day, you were for an ethnocentric apartheid state and now you're cheering for the exact same thing. All right, but let's jump into the manifesto, otherwise this video will be way too long. A manifesto in 50 points. Number one. For everyone living in Germany, Article 1 of the Basic Law applies. The dignity of man is inviolable. This is of course a very vague statement. What does it truly mean? Your dignity is inviolable. However, if I disagree with the public narrative, then my dignity will be shattered, of course. If you want to stand up for the children in Palestine that are being slaughtered, nobody will care about your dignity, let alone about the dignity of those children. Your dignity only stays untouched as long as you agree with the common narrative. Number two, for us, there are no infidels. Everyone can believe in whatever they want, even Santa Claus. <laughs> so there you have this double speech. Of course, for us, there are no infidels. However, there are Islamists. However, there are anti-Semites. However, there are terrorists. You are labeling everybody left and right. And guess what? No, not everybody can believe whatever they want. You cannot believe that Palestine should be free in Germany. Santa Claus, on the other hand, sure, you do not care because Santa Claus is not real. So if you want to believe in a delusion, you go for it. However, if you believe in something that goes against the global narrative yet again, you are the terrorist, you are the anti-Semite. So don't tell me in Germany we can believe whatever we want. Number three, anyone who considers our constitution and our legal system as a collection of non-binding recommendations should leave Germany as soon as possible. So again, a totally vague statement that can apply to pretty much any human being that lives in Germany. How many German criminals do you got? Do they go against the constitution? Of course they do. However, that being said, I agree here. Of course, we have to be law-abiding citizens. This is what it is. Once you enter the country, you enter a contract as well. And Islam tells us to cherish that. When we enter a non-Muslim country, of course, we obey by the laws. However, that won't stop us from practicing our religion. Number four, anyone who wants to live here permanently must learn German. Only when we speak the same language, which we will understand each other. Yeah, duh. Number five, everyone can demonstrate peacefully in Germany for their convictions. Free speech does not include threatening people, assaulting them, throwing rocks, burning cars, or celebrating murderers. Sure, Bild Zeitung, tell that to your German demonstrators on the 1st of May every single year. They're just behaving perfectly. But yet again, peaceful protest. It is only a so-called peaceful protest as long as you go hand in hand with the common narrative 
effective at the time and therefore rendering it useless ultimately because it's not a protest any longer. You of course only protest if you stand up against something. So if in your society there is a social issue that you disagree with, then of course you will have a different opinion than the mainstream and this is why you demonstrate. However, if you have a pro-Palestine demonstration, it will be heavily restricted in Germany. There are things you simply cannot say. Number six, we don't wear masks or veils. We look each other in the face unless it's carnival or corona. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And this pinpoints the hypocrisy of Germany. If an authority tells you now you need to wear a mask, even though later we find out that those masks are absolutely useless in preventing Corona, sure, please obey the authority as if there were God. However, if you want to exercise your personal freedom and you want to cover, that doesn't work. That goes against our ethics. And this is liberalism in a nutshell. They're telling you that they're progressing, they're becoming more free, everybody's accepted, of course. But the reality is, no, you are not. If you hold a certain ideology, you're not accepted. Not only Islam. If you're on the far right, liberalism won't accept you, of course. If you want to practice your religion, as you can see, you won't be accepted either. So I personally have left Germany 10 years ago. I couldn't care less. Your country is a it's absolutely destroyed. I never want to step foot back there. However, that being said, if I go into the park with my two-year-old boy and I see a woman almost naked with her mini skirt, this is extremely offensive to me. And I don't want my child to see such an exposed naked woman. However, that is the law of Germany. Everybody can do whatever they want. They do not care for what is right and wrong and they do not care about your opinion. If you are more conservative, if you are religious, they do not care about that whatsoever. However, they do care if you want to cover up. Don't you see the hypocrisy here? They tell you you cannot cover up, you have to expose yourself, you have to be naked like us, we are the liberated people, we are the intelligent ones. However, if you want to cover up, just wait until we tell you about the next super virus or until it's time for carnival, where everybody goes out on the streets, drinks alcohol en masse, fornicates in the streets in costumes. Then it is A-OK. -okay. Number seven, respect and charity sustain our free society. Whatever that means, we all know within Islam we actually have a pillar of Islam that is giving charity to the poor. I have never seen anything like this in Germany. Number eight, against the backdrop of the darkest chapter in our history, Israel's security is a matter of German national interest. This means standing up for the security of the Jewish people is non-negotiable. Criticism of Israel politics is of course allowed. This is absolutely misleading, of course, they're telling you criticism of Israel's politics is of course allowed. No, it is not. If you're standing up for the Palestinian people, as I said already a billion times, you will be called an anti-Semite, you will be called a terrorist. If you want Israel as the illegitimate state that it is to give up the space for the Palestinian people, you cannot say that you will be... Onto the Arab world as well. The Arab world with the Islamic banking system is the only group of people that stands against them. And this is why they need to be eradicated and this is why they need to be bombed by America as well. Because America is in the hands of the bankers. Number nine, we say please and thank you. Oh, wow, you don't say. I forgot. Muslims are just savages, people from the desert. They have no manners whatsoever, right? It's not as if there was a golden age within Europe under Islam. Islamic rule. It's not as if the Germans were absolute savages when the first Islamic travelers came to Germany. The Germans were still pagans. They were sacrificing people for their gods. They didn't have any hygiene whatsoever. They didn't know what a shower is. Meanwhile, the Muslims washed themselves five times per day. But thank you very much for informing us. From now on, we're going to say please and thank you. Number 10, we gladly shake hands as greeting or farewell. Wow. 
wow, this is totally foreign to us. It's, of course, again, this extreme hypocrisy. I can't stand this, man. If you would talk to a Buddhist, a Buddhist would greet you like this, right? Namaste. And you would say, oh, that's so endearing. That's so amazing. And you would treat them with respect. Be it a Buddhist, be it a Hindu. But if it is a Muslim and you don't want to shake a woman's hand out of respect, no, misogyny, big uh, terrorist, you name it. Yet again, you do not have freedom of speech. You do not have freedom of religion. You do not have any freedom within Germany, even though allegedly it is a liberal country. Number 11, we see the police as friends and helpers, not as repressive force or an enemy. Yeah, well, tell that to your German football clubs, to your hooligans, to your motorcycle clubs and whatnot. Is it not them that scream ACAB? Number 12. Well, many Germans eat pork. Of course, not everyone does. By the way, we have 10 million vegetarians or vegans because freedom also goes through the stomach. So if freedom truly goes through the stomach, you damn hypocrites, why do you need to talk about this? Why don't you write a manifesto to the vegans then? Write 50 points to the vegans, tell them how intolerant they are. If there is truly an intolerant group within Germany, it would be vegans for sure. They would be at least in the top three. No, well, let's address the Muslims that do not eat pork. Hey guys, but some of of us eat pork. Ridiculous, man. Number 13. The state has a monopoly on violence. Apart from the state appointed agencies, nobody has the right to use violence against people or things. Yeah, thank you again for telling us about this very enlightening constitution you got there. 1400 years ago when the Sharia was established, we had that principle already. It is not due to civilians to go out and cause destruction or harm anybody. In a Sharia law situation, you have the government that executes the violence. It is exactly the same and we were there prior to you, dear Westerners, dear Germans. Number 14, we accept that our freely elected parliament, <laughs> freely elected, <laughs> yeah, sure, sets the rules for our coexistence, which can be checked by independent courts. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. If that freely elected parliament of yours has the rules for coexistence, why do you need to write a manifesto then? Why do you need to tell the Muslims that they cannot cover? Only on carnival, guys. Only on corona. What kind of ridiculous statement is this? If you have a parliament that sets the rules for coexistence. If you have rules for coexistence, then obey by them. You allegedly have religious freedom. So leave us alone. Leave us practice our religion. Number 15. Men are allowed to love men and women, women. Whoever has a problem with that is the problem himself. Love and let love. So first and foremost, how very bigoted of you, Bild Zeitung, that you only address men and women. We are the non-binary people. We are the people of no gender whatsoever, addressing only men and women. This is very sexist. But that being said, this is so hysterical, man. Same-sex activity was legalized 1969 in Germany. Just roughly 60 years ago, it was legalized. Prior to that, it was illegal for thousands of years. Same sex activity was prohibited, was frowned upon, was seen as something immoral. Now for the past 60 years, you changed the narrative. However, how can you now expect that everybody will move on with you? Just because you changed your mind and now you believe, hey, this is a-okay, everybody should do it, love is love. You cannot expect that from everybody. Moreover, yet again, this is not only a Muslim issue. Christians or the Jews that you try to protect here have the same opinion. Same sex is seen as a sin within all of those religions. It is not exclusive to Islam. Number 16. Ah, here they're correcting themselves, of course. Even if someone feels neither male nor female, they're not persecuted or punished in our country. Citizens are allowed to think freely and live queer. Living queer in Germany is surely allowed. However, thinking freely, not so much. What if my freedom of thought brings me to the conclusion that I say, you know what, living queer is not good. Living queer is sinful. Living queer leads to depression in many instances and moreover to diseases. I think living queer biologically, spiritually, philosophically is not the right way to go for society. This is my freedom of thought. No, yet again, sexist, misogynist, bigot, 
whatever. So how can you tell me then that I can think freely? And now let's jump through the points because there are way too many and this video will be way too long. Number 19. Women wear bikinis or bathing suits in the swimming pool. And if someone wants to swim naked in the Baltic Sea, that's okay too. Let me complete the sentence for you. However, if you want to wear a burkini, that is not okay. 20. Women and men are equal in every respect. Also, we are equal in every single respect. That is absolutely grandiose. Thank you very much for enlightening lightning me. I didn't know this. You know what? From now on, I'm going to divorce my wife and I'm going to marry a man. Because we're equal in every regard, of course. There's no difference between men and women. It's not as if men are on average stronger. No, absolutely not. It is not as if men do the high-risk jobs 90% of the time. No, absolutely not. We are equal in every single regard. And this is why the West is destroying itself, of course. No, men and women are not equal. Equal. We are not the same. And that is the beauty of it. A truly feminine, normal, natural woman will know that and will appreciate that. It is only brainwashed feminists that want to be equal with men. If you hate men so much, if you hate this world that has been built by men, why do you aspire to become a man? No, women are beautiful and they're beautifully different than men. Men are amazing and they're beautifully different than women. That is the beauty of things. Everybody knows that if you look into the animal kingdom, a male lion and a female lion are not equal. They're different. They have different roles. They have different appearances as well. This is natural. This is normal. No, thank God we are not equal. As I said, otherwise I can get married to a man if we are also equal. Why is it even called homo? Sexuality. Homo means same, same sex. That is what homo means. Homosexuality means same sexually. So if you're attracted to the same, that makes you a homosexual. If you're attracted to something different from you, then you are a heterosexual. So by that standard alone that you are using in your world, you already admit that we're not equal. 21. Equality also in payment for work. We still have to catch up there. <laughs> so why do you make it a point in your manifesto if you yourself have to catch up? Then some more bunk here. We are tolerant with the tolerant and we have no tolerance for the intolerance. But you are intolerant against us. Don't you understand it? Anybody that holds a different position than you is labeled as intolerant and is then intolerated, discriminated by you. We respect every religion, but we clearly separate religion from state. If you respect every religion, why don't you let the Muslim women cover? So you don't respect every religion. 29. You don't have to be a virgin to get married. Of course not. Do what you will. However, the hypocrisy is insane here. Judaism, Christianity, Islam. All of those religions presuppose that you should be a virgin entering marriage. And that is for women and for men alike. Here you have your equality after all. But why making that point? What kind of moral high ground are you standing on now? You're telling me that anybody can fornicate, have sex out of wedlock, and this is our value system. And then you get outraged when people stand up against your value system when they do not agree with that. Moreover, why do you have to mention this? Is it part of your system? Is it part of your rules? Is it part of your law? Of course not. This is your opinion. Hey, you don't have to be a virgin to get married. Fine, do what you will. Your daughters out. Nobody blinks an eye, nobody cares. But why do you have an issue with Muslimas staying virgins? 31. We don't marry off children, and men can't have more than one wife. Yes, wife. But if men want to have sex with hundreds of women in your country, you do not blink an eye. As I said, sex out of wedlock, you have children coming into this world without parents, no worries whatsoever. You can have sex as much as you want to, you can have as many girlfriends as you want to, you can go to the clubs every weekend and hook up, no problem whatsoever. But ooh, God forbid you have more wives than one, that would be terrible. You want to 
tell me that you want to take care of more women, that you actually want to provide for all of them equally, that you want to create a big family? No, please don't! Please wear a condom and have safe sex. This is the righteous way to go in Germany. And we don't marry off children. What kind of ridiculous statement is this, man? In Germany you can have sex with 16, no worries, but you can get married with 18. Of course, they don't want you to stay a virgin until marriage. You can drink alcohol with 16, no problem, but you can get the driver's license with 18. This is the golden standard of rules, of laws, absolutely fantastic. Please obey by those rules, dear citizen. 39. We give up our seats in buses and trains for the elderly and disabled. Yeah, thank you very much yet again for teaching us your superior moral values. Never in my life have I seen a Muslim stand up for an elderly person. In my life. 40. Cheers, Germany. Beer and wine are part of our culture here. Respect it. And if you don't want to drink, don't. So guess what? I grew up in Germany. I grew up in a Christian household. And with 16, I started bodybuilding. I started a fitness lifestyle and I stopped drinking alcohol. When I saw my friends getting drunk with German beer, German wines and whatnot, I saw it as pathetic. A wasted potential, a wasted youth. They didn't produce anything of value. They would work from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, and Saturday and Sunday they would get drunk. Waste their precious years, not accomplish anything. Guess what? I did not respect it back in the day either. I do not respect somebody that is drinking alcohol, nor do I respect it when they smoke cigarettes, or shisha for that matter. There is nothing respectable about it. If you are a sportsman, you accomplish something in the Olympic Games, for example. Sure, I will respect that. You created a business. I respect that. Fantastic. But why would I respect someone that gets drunk? 41. Yet again, this is a really important point of the new constitution. How long or short a skirt is, is decided solely by the woman wearing it. So they made this point at least three or four times, telling you, please leave the woman choose their skirt length. It's really important and dear to us that our women, our daughters, can go out and subjugate themselves to sexual looks. No worries. 42. Those who cannot tolerate the caricature of politicians, celebrities, gods or prophets are not in the right place in Germany. So first and foremost, there are no gods but God. There is only one God. He's the creator of all of us. However, that being said, you can make fun of God in Germany. You can make fun of prophets in Germany. Celebrities, politicians, no worries. But I thought hate speech is not allowed in Germany. I thought discrimination is not allowed in Germany. Are you not discriminating when you're portraying a prophet of a religious group? And that religious group clearly said that this is prohibited and very hurtful within their religion. No problem. Now you're exercising free speech. No discrimination whatsoever. Nothing to see here. Move on. 43. The media questions politicians. But we generally trust <laughs> that the elected officials decide truthfully and for the people's welfare. Okay, let's rewind the clock. We find ourselves in Germany 1938. Hitler is in power. We generally trust that the elected officials decide truthfully and for the people's welfare. You absolute hypocrites. Blah, 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 blah. 50. We love life, not death. Sure, tell it to the thousands of Palestinian civilians, women and children alike. Alright, this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, we're gonna cut it off here. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.